the member has 12 minutes for her presentation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It is a pleasure and a privilege to lead the debate today on my private member's bill, and it's titled Municipal Statute Law Amendment Act, Counselor Pregnancy and Parental Leave 2016. So essentially, this bill would extend maternity and parental leave for Ontario municipal councillors and mayors from the current 12 weeks up to 20 weeks. The Municipal Act, as it's now written, and I'll read it to you, it says, this is Section 259, it stipulates that the office of a member of council of a municipality become vacant if a member is absent from the meetings of council for three successive months without being authorized to do so by a resolution of council. So parents who sit on municipal councils in Ontario who take a leave after a baby is born or adopted can lose their seat after three months unless they can get approval from their council colleagues to extend the leave. There are many municipal leaders and stakeholders right across Ontario who feel that this provision is unfair, it's antiquated, and it's not family friendly. And some of them have joined us here today for the second reading of my private member's bill. So Speaker, it was in June of this year, during a meeting with the Mayor of Kitchener, Barry Verbanovic, that he raised this issue with me. Barry said that a private member's bill would be a good idea to bring clarity to the statute on leaves for members of council within the Municipal Act. Now, the inspiration for this bill is Councillor Kelly Galloway Sealock, who she'd be here with us today, except that she just had her third child a week ago. Logan is her baby boy who was just born, her third boy. So she couldn't be here, but she asked me to read the statement for her, and here's part of her statement. It says, Diane, I wish I could be there today to support this bill moving forward. However, the arrival of my third son only eight days ago keeps me at home. As a mom of three young children, all of which I've had during my time on Kitchener City Council, I believe is it important for the Municipal Act to recognize and acknowledge maternity and parental leave. I believe it is important to implement change so it's clear and transparent for any person wishing to run for municipal office. I feel strongly that changes to the act should be clear and omit the ability for the municipal council to have the authority to vote for a leave extension. With the addition of any language around maternity and parental leave in the municipal act, I believe it will bring the act up to current standards. So if this amendment is adopted, Speaker, future political moms and dads across Ontario can thank <coughs> Kelly for her advocacy. And as I mentioned, it was the Mayor of Kitchener who brought this to my attention. Bear Verbanovic is here today for the second reading, and I would ask that Barry stand so that we could acknowledge him. <laughs> Barry has been a champion for this cause, and also with him are a couple of Kitchener City Councillors, Sarah Marsh and Bill Ioannidis. They're being shy, they're not standing. Uh, and we also have making the trip uh, Paul Grivisic, who is the chief of staff for the mayor. Okay, he's waiting. Yeah, that ride down the 401 is always challenging, so I really appreciate that you are here today. Speaker, the municipal leaders who are here with us are committed public servants who serve their communities with dedication, intelligence, and passion. When you look at other public officials in federal office, at the provincial level, and all other public service employees, they're entitled to maternity and parental leave that is typically up to a year in length. As elected representatives, we do share the concern of how to serve our constituents if we're away on a leave, whether it's to tend to a new child or a leave due to illness. For Kelly, who had her first child in 2013, she continued to attend to constituents' needs and City Hall matters by email, by telephone. She was never really too far away from the action. She even took her sons to council meetings. But we know all too well the demands that are placed on us as elected representatives. These conditions often serve as a barrier to people who might want to get into a career in politics. And I would say that those barriers are especially onerous for women. Here at Queen's Park, as provincial politicians, we face long hours and being away from our families. And that's why many aspiring politicians cut their teeth, if you will, at the local level. They figure they don't have to commute to Toronto or to Ottawa, so serving locally would appear to be more family friendly. But how family friendly is it if new parents are only allowed 
12 weeks at home after the birth of a child or the adoption of a child. Speaker, the International Labor Organization, the ILO, states that the most recent standard on maternity leave mandates a minimum leave of at least 18 weeks. According to the ILO, when the leave is too short, mothers may feel that they're not ready to go back to work. They're going to miss their baby, and consequently, they might quit their jobs, dropping out of the workforce. And when a woman is out of paid work for a very long period of time, it can hinder her ability to jump back in and compete with her colleagues who, in the meantime, have advanced in the workplace. It damages her ability to be an earner in her family and to support her household. For employees who are covered by the province's Employment Standards Act, they have a right to take pregnancy and or parental leave of up to 37 weeks. And when we make this investment supporting a new parent, it's an investment in society. We know that health and education outcomes for children who are raised in stable homes where the parents are earning dependable incomes are more positive. Speaker, when I consulted with the Ministry of Labour on its Changing Workplaces Review, Pregnancy and parental leave is a very important issue. I've been assured that going forward, the government is committed to further consultations with expert stakeholders on a number of areas under the wage gap strategy, including parental leave. The Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, has also waded into this debate, and AMO develops a variety of advocacy positions that matter to Ontario municipalities. So recently, AMO put a review request before the province concerning the Municipal Act, and I'll read it to you. AMO is asking the province to develop a provision to clearly provide parental leave for mayors and councillors by cross-referencing the parental leave legislation. This should be done in a matter that parental leave does not require authorization from council under the Municipal Act and that it does not constitute an absence for meetings of Section 259. AMO represents municipal leaders in over 400 villages, towns, regions and cities right across the province of Ontario and members of this organization want to see parental leave references in the Municipal Act. Speaker, the organization Equal Voice provides interesting snapshots on elected women in Canada, and they do it by the numbers. It's a national multipartisan group that's dedicated to seeing more women elected in Canada. They do this by tracking the number who are out there. So our federal partner, uh, parliament, provincial and territorial legislatures um, right across the country keep these stats. And here's what I can tell you. We've seen significant increases of elected female representatives on the political scene. The federal cabinet of Justin Trudeau is now made up of 50% women. The way he explained this a year ago when he appointed his cabinet, he said simply, because it's 2015. Three Canadian provinces are currently led by women, including Christy Clark of BC, Rachel Notley of Alberta, and our very own Kathleen Wynne here in the province of Ontario. But at the local level, the number of women in <coughs> politics continues to underwhelm. Across Canada, Women only make up 26% of municipal councillors and only 16% of mayors. Those figures are substantially below targets that are set by the United Nations. 30% is what you need to create what it refers to as a critical mass in order to produce public policy that reflects and represents specific concerns. Because when you have women who are sitting at the decision-making table, they're going to advance very different issues. Female leadership takes us in a different direction, but in order to get women to the table to even consider a career in politics, there needs to be accommodations to reflect life's realities, such as pregnancy and motherhood. Speaker, one other issue I believe that we need to put under some scrutiny is the current stipulation that municipal council members who do want to take a leave that they have to go before their peers on council to ask for time off for pregnancy or parental leave to care for a new child. Does this strike you as being somewhat demeaning? Um, does it place women in particular in a diminished position as they have to get approval from their colleagues? What if the council says no? So we should look to our neighbours in the province of Quebec where earlier this year they introduced a private <coughs> member's bill, 594, that is similar to my bill. 
Speaker, because of the nature and conditions of the work that we do as politicians, when you look at federal, provincial, and city hall chambers, oftentimes what you see, and I don't mean this to insult anyone, this is the reality, you see a lot of older people, you see mainly men, and you see limited diversity. And we need to start asking ourselves, I believe, what can we and what should we be doing to invite more diverse representation to the decision-making table? Bill 46 will send a very clear message to would-be female councillors and mayors that they can serve their local communities and also be parents. The two should not be mutually exclusive. I do want to thank the members of council from the City of Kitchener who made their way here today to support this bill. To the other stakeholders who I believe um, support this, uh, we very much appreciate their positive voices and the messages that they have sent. And lastly, I want to thank Kelly Galloway Sealock, who may be watching us at home right now in Kitchener with her three young boys, including her youngest, a new infant. By the way, her father, Tom Galloway, is a Waterloo Regional Councillor in my region, uh, and he is a first cousin to my husband, John. So there's a great deal of interest in our family in seeing this bill go through. I know that we're officially referring to this as Bill 46, but unofficially, I'm going to call it Kelly's bill. I want to thank her for her advocacy, for being a trailblazer in the city of Kitchener and in the province of Ontario. And I very much urge my colleagues in the House to support this bill. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. Why? Because it's 2016. We have so many barriers that currently exist that are preventing women from getting involved in politics and trying to accommodate at the local level women who want to get involved in politics and not fear the concept of having a baby and then being fired from your job because of that because you don't get to council meetings after three months. This is just absurd. We need to fix this. And Barry, thank you very much for uh, holding my feet to the fire. I'm doing this for you and council and for Kelly. Thank you very much.